Hello, sports fan. It's me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke. And today I'm here with another comparison video. Done 11 in the past. You might want to go check out those 11 if you're a fan of one of those teams especially. And today I got another one where we are going to compare the Chicago White Sox of 2021 to the Boston Red Sox of 2021 because as with all the other teams, we will play the Boston Red Sox in 2021, at least as it stands right now, and hopefully stays that way. We will play the Boston Red Sox in April, the first time. Um, I'm not sure if there's, there's probably another time after that later in the schedule, but we are definitely playing them in April. So, um, that's why I got a comparison video against them. And today, to help me with the comparison of the White Sox to the Red Sox, is someone who I consider to be an authority on the Boston Red Sox, and that is Mr. Chris Dufour, who has been on my channel several times and will be a recurring guest on the channel, no doubt. And uh, he is a lifelong Boston Red Sox fan and lives in Williamstown, Massachusetts. So he will be discussing the Red Sox and we together will hopefully present a very uh, fully rounded picture for you of the White Sox Red Sox matchup for 2021. So let's get into it. <laughs> So as I always do in these videos, I will quickly recap the White Sox projected everything in 2021 so that we can compare them to the Red Sox. So as you can see, I got the starting lineup here. Um, it's the usual, you know, you got Anderson at shortstop. You've got uh, Adam Eaton and Adam Engel probably uh, platooning with each other and playing right field, probably in the second spot in the order. Uh, you have, um, you know, you've, what, who's third here? Madrigal, you got Madrigal at second. You got Yasmani yeah, Grandal at catcher. You have Jose Abreu at um, first base. And he will probably DH quite often, especially if Andrew Vaughn is up on the roster to begin the season, breaking from the spring training and going north with Chicago, if that happens. Again, all of these decisions are Tony La Russa's, so who knows? We'll have to stay tuned. Um, you got Eloy Jimenez in left field. He could also see some time at DH. Um... Johan Moncada at third base. Lewis Robert, who won the gold glove in the outfield in the American League in 2020. And uh, possibly Lurie Garcia at DH if uh, Vaughn, and as you can see, I've got Vaughn up there too, if Vaughn doesn't break camp with the White Sox to start the season. And also, I want to point out that last year we were 35 and 25, tied for second place in the AL Central with the Indians. Technically, we were third, the third place team, especially for the seeding purposes in the playoffs, because we had a worse record against the Indians head to head. So anyway, uh, that would take us to the the uh, starting rotation. You got Lance Lynn. You got Lewis. G Lucas Giolito. I keep calling him Lewis. I don't know what is going on with that. But anyway, Lucas Giolito, um, who last year had, a, I believe, a 104 whip for the team. It was great. Uh, Dallas Keuchel, who had a 199 earned run average for us last year in the times that he pitched. He was injured for a, a, a small part of last season. Uh, Dylan Cease who they are expecting bigger things from this year, and so are most White Sox fans. Um, 
then uh, Kopech, Michael Kopech, if Michael Kopech starts the season in the rotation. But at some point in the season, he will probably end up in the rotation. Um, but he may start in the bullpen, maybe doing an inning here or there, then working his way up to a couple of innings in, per appearance, then maybe working his way from there to three innings, um, like kind of a middle reliever, just to stretch him out and then get him ready, maybe for later in the year to be in the rotation. That's a possibility. He may also just start the year in the minor leagues with the team. Uh, and then you've got Ronaldo Lopez and Carlos Rodon as other starting pitching options in the fourth and fifth and or just fifth spot, depending on Kopech and whether he makes the team, uh, it makes the rotation right out of camp. Uh, and then you've got the bullpen options. Of course, Liam Hendricks, who we just signed from the A's, had a great year last year for the A's. Um, Cody Hewer, Aaron Bummer, Evan Marshall, um, Matt Foster, and then you got Garrett Crotchet, who can throw 100 miles an hour. That guy has some smoke on his pitches. And then you've got uh, Jimmy Cordero, May or may not make the team, we'll see. Uh, these are just bullpen options that the White Sox have. I would, If I had to guess, I would say you're gonna see um, Cordero at some point in the season for certain stretches. I don't think it's gonna, we're gonna go the whole season and not see him, injuries happen, things like that. And then Jace Fry, left-hander out there in the bullpen. And then the uh, remaining bench options, other than Andrew Vaughn and, um, and Engel, since they are, uh, you know, there's question marks around whether, uh, well, there's not a question mark with Engel. He, he will probably be a platoon with, um, uh, with Eaton. But um, with Vaughn, it's a question mark whether he starts the season with the team or not. Um, but if he doesn't, we'll see him at some point, I think, anyway. So other than them, the other bench options would be Danny Mendick, uh, backup infielder. Zach Collins, who will be the backup catcher, at least to start the season. We'll see if the White Sox do anything to augment that or make it a little better. Or whether Collins just is a great choice as a, uh, a, a catcher to um, feed off of uh, Yasmani Grandal during the course of the season. Maybe he is. Maybe we haven't seen enough to know that. And, uh, and that would be great. Um, or maybe they go get somebody else. Or maybe they bring up somebody uh, like Yerman Mercedes or someone like that. Who knows? And then uh, Mick Rodolfo and Nick Williams, who at one point was on the Philadelphia Phillies, you might remember. So that is the White Sox for 2021. And uh, here's what Chris Dufour had to say about the White Sox. Uh, you know, but they're stacked. I mean, they made some good moves, you know, signing Hendricks and uh, letting Colomb go. And uh, trading uh, Dunning to get Lynn was a nice, nice move. I mean, Engel and uh, and Eaton are probably going to be better than what Mazar gave him last year in right field. You know, so the bullpen is deep. Uh, you know, Cadero, like uh, Bummer, Marshall, uh, they're all complementary of each other. Uh, and then Hendricks at the end is a stud. So, I mean. But relievers, you never know. I mean, Hendricks signs a big contract. Maybe he doesn't <clears throat> reproduce his season from last year. But he certainly, you know, if he if he does, then you know, I expect them to to win that division. Yeah. Well, as I told you many times uh, this off season, we've been making a lot of moves that uh, put us directly in the uh, sights of mediocrity at best. So I think I th if that was uh, our goal, the uh, Red Sox uh, front office is goal, then I think we're going to hit it. 
you know, we're going to hit that uh, 81. If we win 85 to 88 games, I think uh, we'll, we'll, might be the greatest managing job that Alex Corr's ever done. But, uh, you know, this is one of those teams that uh, people like to say is, you know, because the Red Sox were so bad last year. They were. So, I mean, let's face it. I mean, we just lost uh, JBJ to Milwaukee like three days ago, two days ago, right? So, Mm -hmm. and then we made a big move signing Danny Santana. (laughs) So, obviously, you can see, man, we did that all, we did that pretty much all winter. We traded Benintendi to the Royals, gave up a Benintendi, got Frenchy Cadero. Uh, you know, we signed Enrique Hernandez. That was our big free agent signing, a 30, 31 year old utility super super player. Uh, we signed Marwin Gonzalez, who hit what two eighteen last year, if that. Uh, we signed, we traded for Adam Adovino, uh, who, you know, was good in two thousand nineteen, but uh, you know, had a, had a little trouble last year, mostly because he had really one horrendous out outing against the Blue Jays, but. Nonetheless, was not a, uh, a good year. So I mean, you know, you go, but I mean, we have some good players. I mean, look at we have Vasquez at catcher. He started when we won the World Series in '18. We got Devers at third. He played. Uh, Bogarts was our starting shortstop in '18 when we won the World Series, right? Yeah. Uh, JD Martinez, he's got to bounce back. He, there's, there's no way he can duplicate how bad he was last year. There's just no, he's too talented. I mean, he basically fall out of bed and do better than he did last year. All right. So I, we traded for Hunter Renfro, who was another kind of guy that uh, hasn't reached his potential, to say the least. He, he did slug over, slug some home runs one year, maybe 27, 28. Uh, so they say his swing is made for that at Fenway. So mm-hmm. we'll see. He's going to be right field. We're going to move Verdurgo to center field. He's obviously a great piece we got in the Betts trade, and he had a great year last year. And, and, and he's kind of in the make, I would say, of a Robert or a Madrigal in the sense. He's not a defensive gem like Robert, but in the Ooh. sense that in the sense that he's an up-and-coming player who, who's got a lot of skill. Alex Verdugo. He, he, right, he, right. I mean, I liked Verdugo. I liked, you know, the trade that they did when they, um, you know, obviously – you know he's not on the uh, the scale of uh, bets. Yeah, bets. But um, I think he is a good young player, and um, it seemed like a move at the time that the Red Sox had to make. I mean, it's kind of funny because if you look at the Red Sox lineup, so you got Vasquez at catcher, and then maybe Enrique Hernandez at second, maybe Marlon Gonzalez. I mean, we don't really have a second. We haven't had a, a decent second baseman since. Pedroia got hurt, but or maybe we had decent, but not for a long time. But and then we and then so if you rolled the dice on our if all our veterans played up to their capability, and then you rolled the dice and you won on every player like Bobby Dalbach, Frenchy Cordero, Hunter Renfro, you know if you if they all somehow have good years, which is doubtful, then. That we're, we'll be right, you know, who knows, maybe we'll be right in it. You know, our starting pitcher was so bad last year, and now, so, we get E-Rod back, he missed all last year, so that's that's a bonus, right? I mean, he's bound to, he's a 20-game winner in, in uh, 2019. Mm-hmm. We get Evaldi, and then we, we got your favorite, Garrett Richards. <laughs> Bobby Z, putting all down on Garrett Richards. Yeah, uh, Garrett Mar- Richards. Martin Perez. <laughs> yeah, he better be. And then, uh, you know, so we got Martin Perez in the fourth spot. We brought him back. He, he pitched decent for us. I mean, average, you know, maybe just a little bit below average statistically, but average for, for on the staff that we had last year. He looked like a Cy Young Award winner, let's face it. Uh, mm-hmm. He was certainly the most consistent pitcher we had, starting pitcher we had last year. And then uh, Nick Pavetta, who we traded, uh, got from the Phillies at the end of the season, I think, in the workman deal. Right. Now, Pavetta... They're really high on Pavetta. A lot of people are. So if that kid, if he can figure it out, they, you know, if he can figure it out, if he can get, if he can, you know, command his fastball, then who knows? But again, we're rolling the dice that uh, on all five of the goals, really. Although Erod's probably got a proven track record, but I mean, the other four: Navaldi, Richards, Perez, and Pavetta. Uh, Pavetta, we have to, we have to have them all have their best year, you know. 
and then our bullpen is just a hodgepodge of who knows. You know, we got Matt Barnes, who is the best, worst closer in the history of baseball, right? I mean, he's just one day he's good, the next day he stinks, the next day he's okay, the next day he stinks. I mean, you just don't know what you're going to get from him. Out of Vino is in the pen. We got Josh Taylor. I mean, listen to these names Josh Taylor, Ryan Brazier, Brazier, Austin Price. Darwin Zahernan. Now, I like Darwin Zahernan as a lot. We signed the, the, the guy from Japan. I can't say his name, but it's something like Hiro Kazu Sawamura. You know? Mm-hmm. Um, I hope I didn't butcher that too bad, but he's not. I mean, he, his stats in Japan were, you know, average, so I don't know. It seems like a, a little bit of mediocrity. A lot of mediocrity to me, but, you know, on the upside, if, if everyone does great. Who knows? Maybe we, maybe we, at this team, I think this is a team that, to me, you know, surprises people early, hangs around till maybe first or second week of August, and then fades. You know, mostly because the the pitchers are just not going to be able to be consistent enough for us to hang in it with loaded teams like the Yankees and the Blue Jays and uh, who else? Tampa Bay. Tampa Bay, right? I mean, I was <laughs> the Orioles. I was like, no, 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 we can hang with the Orioles. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> we do hard. No, but the rest of them, I don't know. So, right. I mean, we'll see. It could be, it could be fun to watch this team overachieve for a few months. I, I, I mean, I hope they do. They're all good. I mean, you know, they're all good baseball players. But they were uh, at one point, they all were good. You know, Dahlbeck is young. But, you know, they, a lot of people say Dahlbeck's swing is exactly like Michael Chavis. Like, well, you know, Michael Chavis went from 2019, great, you know, decent season. Everyone was excited to 2020. He looked like he couldn't hit a baseball. And, I mean, we got a, another reclamation product, product and uh, Christian Arrojo. I mean, who knows what he's going to do. He, you know, Tampa Bay thought he was going to be great for like five years, and they finally dumped him with the Giants, and now he's, on, and now he's with us. So, I don't know. What's the, uh, what's the status with uh, Chris Sale this year? Yeah, they, uh, they're going to bring him back pretty slow from what I understand. So mm-hmm. maybe, uh, you know, if we do see him, I think it'll be end of July after the All-Star break for sure. You know? mm-hmm. I don't know. I'd like to see maybe a, um, some – Someone better at the back end of the rotation. Um, well, than, geez, if Kopech comes back, you got it. Yeah. If, if yeah. Kopech if Kopech comes back as Kopech, holy right. cow, you got a guy throwing a hundred in your fifth spot. That's ridiculous. Yeah, I think it's going to take a while for him though. So well, I heard they were going to use him in the bullpen. So, but that could be first half of the season they use him in the bullpen and then move right. him into the rotation. So yeah, you know, you start him out, you like he gets one inning appearances and then he gets two inning appearances and you know they stretch him out until they can get him into the rotation. But you know, we'll see. And then also at uh, at backup catcher, you know, um, Grandall's going to be injured invariably at times. He already is. In fact, he got a minor injury already in spring training. And, uh, and he, you know, he's, he's not going to be able to catch 130 games. So you would like to see a better – I mean, maybe Zach Collins is ready. Maybe he's ready to take that step and, you know, step forward and, like, establish himself, and, you know. Well, I think the beauty of, uh, of that is, you know, Theo Epstein used to say – Probably doesn't say it anymore, but he used to say the first two months are to figure out what you have. The next two months are to figure out what you need, and uh, and then you, you make the trades so you have the team you want. Your last the last two months. So, mm-hmm. I mean, there's no harm in giving Collins two months to see if he's up to the job this year. Yeah, and then and then you know a month, you know the third month of the year. If he if he is great, you keep him, and if uh, if not, you go out and get another backup catcher. Yeah. You know, I don't think it's gonna. I don't think he's gonna kill their chances in, in April and May, part of the beginning of June, for sure. Right, right. Yeah. And we're talking about the backup catcher. Right. That well, that is true. That is. If we're, true. If we're down to talking about the backup catcher as a problem, I think you're in good shape. So, what do you guys think? You think we have a good chance against the Red Sox this year of uh, beating them, winning the series, winning the season series, maybe sweeping them? Who knows? So, uh, let me know. In the comments below how you feel about it. 
especially if you're a Red Sox fan. Um, was there anything we left out in our discussion that you can think of? And how do you, if especially if you're a Red Sox fan, think that the Red Sox will do against my White Sox in 2021? And as a, one last reminder, give me a thumbs up, leave a comment below. If you haven't subscribed to the channel, subscribe doesn't cost you any money and it helps me out a great deal. So um, other than that, I guess that's it for me, Sportsman Z, Bob Zolke, signing off.